everybody and welcome back to our Children's Liturgy of the Word for the very first day of the year. Happy New Year everybody! And do you know, when I look at our table today, I think there are some clues that we're still in celebration mode. I wonder if you can tell, is there something about maybe the colours on our table which tell us that we're still celebrating? What do you think? Oh, well done if you said that we've still got a white cloth because white and gold are our colours of celebration in the church. Now, it's not Christmas, is it? It's not the Feast of the Nativity of the Lord because we did that last Sunday, didn't we? We celebrated that amazing feast last Sunday. I think to round off our celebration of what we call the octave of Christmas, so the week of partying and celebration that we do after Christmas, we're going to have another very special feast and party today. And it's to celebrate this incredible person here. Do we know who this is? Can you shout it out if you know? Yes, well done. It's Our Lady Mary, the mother of Jesus. Well, let's see what more that Jesus is going to teach us about Mary, his mother, when we read our gospel passage together. Are we ready to listen? Yes, I think we are. So we're going to make ourselves very quiet and still inside. And we're going to ask for God's help to come to know him better through his word. So we pray, Lord, may your word be on my mind and on my lips and in my heart. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The shepherds hurried away to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. I think there's an awful lot of different things going on in this gospel passage. I want to count the number of things that the shepherds are doing now that they've come to see the baby Jesus, who is the Son of God. They find Jesus. They told everybody what they had been told about Jesus. And then everyone who hears what the shepherds have to say oh, are astonished. And what does Mary do? Can anybody remember? Does Mary speak out loud? I'm seeing lots of shaking heads. Does Mary do something very big and obvious for the shepherds who have come? No, I don't remember her doing that. Shall we remind ourselves what Mary does? As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. So Mary is very quietly thinking and praying about all the wonderful things that have happened to her recently. What kind of wonderful things do you think Mary might be thinking and praying about that have happened to her recently? If you like, you can pause the video and turn to the grown-up next to you and have a chat about what you think she might be thinking and praying about in her heart. Can you, can you let me know what you've been talking about as well? Oh, wonderful. I've heard some of you say, well, she might be remembering the birth of Jesus when all the angels were there. Or she might be remembering the long and difficult journey to Bethlehem to give birth to Jesus. Or she might be remembering the time when the angel came to visit her in Nazareth and tell her that she was going to be the mother of God. Maybe she's pondering all these things in her heart. I think you're right. But what I'm wondering is, if you came to this scene, if you stumbled across it and got to see what was happening, 
What do you think would be the most important part of what was happening? Would it be the shepherds telling their story? Or the people being astonished at the story? Or would it be Mary just sat quietly by herself in the corner, just having a think and a pray? What do you think would be the most the part that you'd be most focused on looking at. Hmm. Do you want to know what I think? I think if I walked in, I'd look at the shepherds who were talking and telling everyone about Jesus. And then I'd look at the people who were going, oh, oh my gosh, that's an amazing story. And then I think last of all, I'd turn to the corner and see Mary just quietly thinking and praying and pondering these things in her heart. Do you think that means that what Mary is doing is the least important thing? Because it's the least noticeable? Mm. You all look a bit like, mm, no, you're not right, Sister Karina. Mm. I think even though what Mary is doing is very quiet and hidden, I think it's very important to think about the wonderful things that God has done for us and to pray about them. Have any of you ever sat down and prayed and thought about the wonderful things that God has done, like sending us Jesus, or speaking to Mary through the angel, or dying on the cross for us? Put your hand up if you've ever thought and prayed about these things and pondered them in your heart. I'm seeing lots of hands up and there are some hands that haven't gone up and that is okay because there's always a good time to start. Do you think that we could be like Mary and to quietly ponder and pray in our hearts about the wonderful things that God has done? Well, I'm seeing lots of hands going up. Yes, I think we could do that, couldn't we? Now, this is a bit difficult, isn't it? Because None of us were actually there when Jesus was born, were we? None of us saw it happen. None of us were there with the shepherds, and with the angels and with Mary. Were you? No, you weren't, were you? You're all shaking your head like, no, don't be silly, Sister Carino. But I'm wondering if we have seen Jesus come to us in a very special way. Maybe it's happened at Mass. Can you think of a time that Jesus has come to us at Mass? Maybe not looking like a baby, but maybe looking like a piece of bread. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, well done all of you who said Holy Communion or the Eucharist. That is our special moment when we see Jesus coming to us and we can celebrate him and thank him and ponder in our hearts this wonderful thing. And that is why we always read the Bible together before we receive our blessing or Holy Communion at Mass. So that we can be like Mary and we can ponder in our hearts the wonderful things that are happening. Shall we practice being a bit like Mary now? Shall we practice pondering in our hearts, thinking and praying about the wonderful things that God has done? I think we should. So what we can do is we can make ourselves very quiet and still inside. And we can say, thank you, Jesus, for giving us Mary. Because when we look at Mary, we see how we are meant to follow you and how we are meant to love you. We can say, please, Jesus, please make us more like Mary so that we can ponder in our hearts all the wonderful things you've done. And we can say, sorry, Jesus, for all the times that I haven't been thankful and pondered in my heart all the wonderful things you've done. I'm sorry for the times when I haven't followed you like Mary did and haven't loved you like Mary does. Do you know what? Maybe we can finish by saying the special prayer to Mary. And if you don't know it, that's okay. But if you do, you can join in. 
So we're going to finish by saying together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next week. God bless.